Over to you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are. Okay. Thank you for introducing me so beautifully. Thank you so much. I'll begin with wholeheartedly thanking respected Chancellor Professor Shomit Rai, sir. Uh, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Deependra Jha, sir. Director of School of Education, Dr. Shaoli Mukherjee, ma'am. Head of the department, Dr. Bishash, ma'am, the esteemed panelist today, and Professor Paroma Kundu, ma'am, who has invited me here today. The students and all of you who are watching us right now, thank you so much. It is truly an honor to be addressing the panel with such esteemed panelists present today. And thank you, Department of Education, Adamus University, for inviting me today. Also, congratulations for choosing a topic so pertinent. A lot of it is said about women and success, but dialogues about you know, women's mental health is such a hush-hush, a taboo. With students here who are about to become professionals, it is important that we take the step to break this taboo, each of us in our own way, definitely. When I asked Poruma yesterday about what should I be speaking today, she said, why don't you talk about your own life? The discussion today is about how mental wellness is important for the success of women. Well, I'll use my life stories as anecdotes. I'd like to begin with asking the first question to you regarding this. How do you all define success? Extremely high educational qualifications, foreign holidays, very fat purses, or roaring company designations? Well, I may have some another definition for you. I have come to learn from my own experiences and struggles with it over the years that success is getting up from the bed each day, wanting to make a cup of tea, wanting to bathe, wanting to get out, socialize, wanting to take care of myself. Mental health issues are not visible all the time, you know. It is not how uh, it is portrayed always in films or made to look like in novels. Sometimes it's very quiet. And sometimes it just hides behind this makeup I put every day to go to my workplace or for that matter, your workplace. Mental health issues are not like potassium cyanide that kills you immediately. It depletes you. It depletes you layer by layer. Mental illness is more like arsenic. The very struggle to get up in the morning, make a cup of tea in the morning, not wanting to be uh, bathe, you know, to just curl up in the bed and keep scrolling through the phone. We all do that sometimes, right? There are days like this. Unfortunately, all these signs are very telltale signs of, you know, deep issues that lay within us. Mental health is not only imperative for anyone's success, women or men notwithstanding. It is important because we must continue to live to fight the battles, you know? It is that important. And I am today talking about that silent killer that you may not even know exists in you, in your friend, in your mother, in your boss, or any lady that you admire. Because it's very hard to define it. And it is very hard to detect and even harder to accept for your, yourself and the society you live in because you may seem normal, chirpy, extrovert. Why should you have mental illness? Nobody wants to be labeled as someone who sees a therapist, you know? That's the reality. When you're a student, classmates in your college and in later life, people in your workplace probably would laugh behind your back it's a great gossip, you know, that you're seeing a therapist. Why is it a gossip? If I may ask that question. Why is it such a shame to see a therapist openly? You know, why is it so difficult for us to admit, I'm struggling. I have a mental health issue. You know why? Because it is we who have shrouded mental illness in a societal wall of shame, made it sound like it's very shameful. Please remember, the first and most important step on the road to mental health is acknowledging the need to take action. 
for women taking that first step can be particularly challenging due to you know societal pressure or the image that you may uphold of being strong in the social uh, media age these days so i'll tell you something about my life i was uh, just about your age i was 21 alone in bangalore studying my first masters in audio visual communication and comets where i teach right now so that's when I realized that I don't, I'm not sleeping for weeks. Weeks became months. Uh, then I started buying cough syrups, over-the-counter sleeping pills from nearby stores to put myself to sleep, you know. But I could not. I could not sleep at night. I would miss my morning classes because I would, I would fall asleep during the day. And I struggled for six months all alone. I had no clue what I was going through, you know. And many of you may you know, may right now be able to relate to something like this. So when I told my close friends, very close friends who I know would not judge me and the adults I could trust, they said, no, no, it cannot be depression, Swagata, you know, because you're such an extrovert, you're so chirpy, how can you be depressed? So what was I going through really? I, I had no clue. And then uh, because I, I'm involved in a lot of other social uh, activities, I met this uh, person who's a mental health worker and he pushed me to see a psychiatrist. And that's where I gained my first wisdom about mental health, you know. The head of the Department of Psychiatry of Victoria Hospital in Bangalore told me, and mind you, he was not at all as hot as Shah Rukh Khan looks like as a therapist in Love You Zindagi. He's like a like a boring uh, psych psychiatrist, uh, if I may say. But his words opened my eyes. He said, uh, and listen to this very carefully, all of you. It might just open your eye. The very fact that you have realized that there is something wrong in you and you need help is 90% of, of the battle won. Whatever 10% is left, I, as a psychiatrist and other doctors, will help you with medicines and therapy. I was then diagnosed with severe clinical depression. And I remember how I became the college gossip. You know, being called pagol, mental, nutcase, etc. Uh, we began with success, right? How important is mental health for women to be successful in, this, uh, in their lives? Well, I went on to top that year in my college in journalism. Next year, I received an international media IDDA award given by Dubai Media City for my outstanding work in radio. And that was to change my life forever because I started as a journalist and move on, moved on to radio for this award. I'm the only Indian from the radio industry to win it and definitely the only Bengali. But for me, success was not winning that award. For me, success was to get up from my hostel bed, get bathed, put kajal, get ready for my classes, or, you know, for that matter, write the script of the documentary that won me that international award. Because mental health issues stop you from wanting to do anything. And anything can mean getting up from the bed. The most daunting obstacle to treatment of mental health disorders is the societal stigma attached to the diseases. And you, you know, young ones will, our next generation will be there to break these taboo. That is what Deepika Padukone is trying to break when, you know, when she came out with her stories of struggle. And that is what I'm trying to do right now. Success or what society perceives as success is what blossoms when a woman has taken the first successful steps towards, you know, acknowledging that something is wrong within her. For women's mental health, this knowledge that I know something is wrong without, within me is the power. Acting upon it is the empowerment. You can even, you know, choose to get well this discreetly, not telling anybody, or be as open as me or Deepika Padukone, but that you should not stop you from choosing your wellness. Before I end, I will tell you about the most daunting part of my life story. And I, I don't want to make any of you uncomfortable or sad, but stop me if, if you're getting uncomfortable. But 
Uh, this is just to tell you how, how I survived. In January 2020, in a pregnancy accident, I lost both my newborn twin boys. They were just two days old and they were my only living children. I was in the hospital still under treatment from that pregnancy accident. And after my boys passed away, I didn't want to live. I decided to die. So in that hospital while on treatment, I stopped eating for 10 long days. Doctors were forcing down intravenous medicines to keep me alive from that starving. I didn't want to live at all. Having lost my children, I did not even find any purpose of my life anymore. It was during that very traumatic time, my husband told me that I could use my grief, my bereavement grief, my pain of child loss to help counsel other women like me who have lost their children too. Because, you know, I have a platform, I, I can speak, I can write. Maybe, just, just maybe, that could give me some purpose to live. You know, I kind of liked the sound of that. I slowly started eating and was discharged from the hospital after a month still very frail, trauma-stricken. I could not sleep for months in that trauma. Now, exactly two years have passed since I lost my children. And in these two years, I needed a full year of aggressive therapy, my own self. While on therapy, I decided to turn my story of trauma into something meaningful. And I started to write articles about child loss, bereavement, blogs about mental health condition of mothers who lose the children. And in two years, my blogs have won awards. I have been published in American and British journals, spoken in international plan panels about it, and personally counseled and supported many hundred women through my story. And wanted to share this with you today because we are talking about success and mental health. You know what happened last week? A very famous British MP, Member of Parliament from London, who also represents an organization for the wellness of South Asian women and their mental health, called me, she, she fished me out, she figured my email and called me. And she told me to join the organization formally as their India representative to support their narrative. I call that success because I did not brush my mental illness under a rug and feel ashamed about it. I chose to work towards my bell, wellness, you know. From being a radio jockey to teaching students like uh, you in Comets Bangalore, to being Sunny Leone's voice coach and voice trainer for celebrities. I have, a, I have come a long way in my career battling the obstacle called mental health. Mental illness, my dear, is not your success show ruiner. Not addressing it is what will stop you from being successful. I love to lead by example and I hope students who are listening today will be inspired to follow my example. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for sharing your bold stories with us. It was thank you so much. it was really very inspirational. I thank guess uh, many many of us can truly relate to such uh, related stories where we hesitate to acknowledge our mental illness in some way or the other. So thank you, ma'am. Now. We will have a very quick interaction with our active participants who are requested to ask questions directly by unmuting themselves, or they can also leave their questions in the chat box for us to read them out to Miss Swagata. Anyone? Yeah, so uh, very used to feedbacks uh, because I, I was a radio jockey for so long and I could quickly, you know, uh, I, I see the messages. So I'm just quickly going to read them out. And uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, there's, a, there's a message from uh, Ishita Chakraborty. Uh, must say, ma'am, you have stayed so strong and keep fighting. Thank you for motivating us and giving us such a positive vibe. Thank you so much. Uh, Shuranjana Ghosh uh, says, thank you, for Ms., uh, thank you, Ms. Mojumdar, for your encouraging lecture. The pleasure is all mine. And thank you so much for sharing your story. It was really inspiring. Thank you, Safika Sultana. Thank you so much. OK. Uh, so anyone else? Okay. Yes, Sumedha, I would like to uh, say something to Swagata, ma'am. Yes, I am uh, Dr. Viswas, uh, head of the department. Yes, ma'am. Uh, very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. It, it has been wonderful listening to you. I am sure that you have uh, uh, listened to such compliments. But from the representative of School of Education, I would definitely like to 
uh, say, say to you that this type of stories, which are real life stories, this is actually an eye opener, not only for the women, but for all the students of School of Education, uh, Department of Education, Adamasi University. Uh, so thanks a lot for your active deliberation. It has really inspired a lot of us and I feel great and wonderful uh, listening to you. Thank you so much, ma'am. The pleasure is all ma mine, ma'am. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Thank you. Over to you, Sumedha. Okay, so anyone else want to ask any kind of question to ma'am? Uh, ma'am, uh, I guess one of our friends, Sudipta Roy, is uh, uh, wanting to ask a question, but she's unable to unmute herself. So I'm asking her it from her behalf. That is, uh, she's saying that you are right, ma'am. We were people, uh, we hear people saying that extroverts cannot have depression. Even family members, for that matter, say that, say the same thing. How did you seek family support? How did you convince them you needed to see a psychiatrist? So this is her question, ma'am. Oh, oh, very, very pertinent question. Thank you. Uh, you know, when I first told my parents that uh, I, I may have uh, something going on in my head, they said cannot be because you are a talkative girl. It's not possible. So um, it was difficult because of the stigma attached. Even my family thought that, you know, uh, we do not have mental illness. Why should uh, our daughter suddenly become pagol? And that's what happens, you know, because that's what they think mental illness is. Mental illness is not Rachi, Kake, Agra or whatever. Mental illness is this. Yes. Mental illness is, is many of you. So that is the stigma I have tried to break. And my family, I think, took a lot of time to realize that my crusade was 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 to break this barrier where the familial support and the the you know the close people support comes to somebody like me so it took us took us a lot of time but now they have connected initially there was a lot of issues they would tell me that you know don't post your stories on social media it's not it doesn't look nice and people think you're mad well people also think i'm successful so why not yes. and if my stories inspire a few of you why should i not be loud about them yes ma'am very